As the world enters a great job displacement, white collars and blue collars disappear. Even coders we disappear too. Nobody is immune. But as it always happens, when some doors are closing, other doors are opening. And in this video we will talk about three new professions that have future. Three professions that have their doors opening. You're on a scripted channel. And here we explore AI. For those of us who are here for the first time, who is new here, I'm a hybrid of an AI researcher, coder and a behavioral economist. Graduated first from Humboldt University in Berlin and then from Columbia University in New York. I have been involved in a, as a consultant in various projects for about a hundred companies from virtually all industries you can think of. And that happened in six countries on four continents. And as a Forbes columnist, I spent about five years in China writing about tech and economics. I have seen from the inside how companies that once were industry leaders, how they got extinct virtually overnight, disappeared without a trace. And how entire new industries started to grow on their ruins. What we see now with AI has happened in the past already. Maybe in, in forms not so violent, not so brutal, but it did happen. This is an unavoidable process. This is evolution. You either adapt or you get extinct. Well, mm, professionally. And today we will talk about three new professions, three new ways to adapt, to avoid extinction and to survive. Our first survival profession is parallel programming. Until recently, Parallel programming was a small niche profession. Many people haven't even heard about it. However, ChatGPT has changed that. Since 2022, after ChatGPT has turned the world upside down, big tech started building AI factories. Because to run your ChatGPT or Midjourney script or Midjourney query, a special AI factory is needed. This is similar to a huge data center. However, Unlike traditional data centers, the AI factories, they have AI chips. Like this colossus AI factory that Elon Musk has just completed uh, literally just last week. That colossus, it has 100,000 advanced H100 AI chips. The whole purpose of AI factory is to run AI model like ChatGPT or Miss Journey and nothing else. And the key difference from a typical data center that uh, the, the data centers that we all used to is parallelism. Because almost any AI task is run on multiple chips simultaneously, or at least on multiple cores. Parallelism may sound like a simple task, but it is not. For example, here is Colossus. Elon Musk has just built it to train Grok model. It has 100,000 H100 AI chips. And for those of us who forgot, each of this H100 NVIDIA AI chip, it is the most complex mechanism ever created by humankind so far. And Musk has put together 100,000 of them. He had connected together 100,000 of the most complex mechanisms ever built by human. And each of them has 192 cores. So we are talking overall about a machine with 19 million independent cores. And uh, these cores, they work simultaneously. So how do you coordinate 19 million most complex mechanisms ever built by humans. This is why each core was made programmable, independently programmable. And to make these 19 million cores talk to each other, uh, to work in parallel, uh, that's a purpose of the parallel programming. It is a function of these guys, the parallel programmers, to make these cores run in parallel, to extract, to squeeze as much performance from these cores as possible. The parallel coding itself is not something that is uh, something new or prohibitively complex. In fact, it is actually done using CUDA, a programming language based on C, C++. But besides knowing the language, it also requires knowledge of AI chips. And even more importantly, it requires a knowledge of um, AI models. Because many types of AI models have their specifics, uh, have their quirks, and they require additional, like individual approach. Currently, we cannot say that CUDA parallel programmers are paid very well. For example, the average salary in the US is just about $86,000. So this is substantially lower than the average salaries that a senior C++ developer can expect. However, 
These numbers are from before the AI wave. As the first scale AI factories come online, and uh, well, there will be hundreds and hundreds of them, parallel programmers, parallel coders will be in increasing demand. Compensation packages will go up. And here's why. The cost of running an AI factory can easily measure in tens of millions of dollars a day. And a star parallel programmer can improve productivity by 1%, 5%, even 10%. In other words, parallel programmers can generate for AI factories millions of dollars a day. It is a solid incentive for AI factories to pay attractive compensations for the top talent. And we are about to witness a renaissance of parallel programming. And now an important question, will this job, the parallel coding, will it also become a non-human? Uh, is it going to disappear just like all other coding jobs? Well, the answer is probably yes, because personally, I don't really see anything that AI cannot do in parallel coding. However, because AI wave is a trend, is a phenomenon that has just started to support it, people will be needed for a reasonably long time, maybe five, maybe even 10 years, well, long enough to become financially independent. In other words, parallel coding is a path to survival. And this is why it is number one on our survival list. Parallel programming, uh, parallel coding is a very exciting field and there is much more that can be said about it, much more that we could pack into this video. Which is why we're going to be making a separate video just about parallel coding. And if you want to make this happen, this, to get this video sooner, leave a comment with words, uh, something along the line like, hey, I need parallel coding, I need parallel programming. If we get a hundred uh, comments like this, uh, we will try to make this video as soon as the next month. Another area where AI wave creates new opportunities is AI cybersecurity. If you went to any cybersecurity conference in the last uh, about year or so, you probably saw, you probably noticed how super pumped, super excited these crowds are. There is an expectation of a major gold rush, and they have a good reason uh, for being so excited. Because for cybersecurity, AI is a true bonanza. It's like a lollapalooza, as uh, Charlie Munger uh, liked to say. We are witnessing a formation of a brand new phenomenon, a brand new profession. AI cybersecurity. Here we will give two specific examples where AI turns the cybersecurity industry upside down. The first one and the most obvious one is phishing. We are all familiar with standard phishing. Uh, each one of us receives like tons of emails from all sorts of fraudsters trying to deceive us, trying to persuade us to click that link. It may be hard to believe, but the number of people who become a victim of phishing attacks is extremely high so high that it had become the main way cyber criminals penetrate corporate IT defense. The stakes are very high too. Once they got inside the corporate IT perimeter, cyber criminals usually deploy ransomware, which encrypts corporate data. And then they demand ransom. The largest ransom cases reported so far were over $10 million. And we can only guess how great the reputational damage was coming on top of that. In case, for example, of a ransom attack on Maersk in 2017, that damage was around $300 million. The company refused to pay and had to recover the systems and the data manually uh, while putting the business on hold. How many companies decided not to make public that they became the victims of a ransom attack? Well, we can only guess. Do you remember those standard recommendations of how to detect phishing emails? For example, to look for typos and bad English? Well, indeed, just a few years ago, many phishing emails, they looked like they were written by some delinquent student. AI changed that forever. Phishing emails are now flawless and Hemingway himself couldn't write them better. So you cannot really detect phishing by just looking uh, for broken language anymore. But that is just a half of the problem. Because besides excellent English, AI gave phishing specialists uh, two new weapons. So the first weapon is access to unprecedented amount of personal data harvested, uh, scraped from the internet. Phishing AI algorithms, they now know about us more than we do. And the second weapon is AI 
has become a master of uh, social engineering. For example, if previously phishing emails were trying to use some simple curiosity or fear and, um, well, usually they were just a fairly simple process, just a, a primitive one-step process. Now AI can apply very complex schemes of uh, social and psychological engineering. It knows each of individuals' uh, psychological vulnerabilities. It can time the messages. And it also no longer limited by just emails or SMS. No, AI phishing is quickly becoming omnichannel, running multiple communication vectors, including even video calls with fake AI personas. Another reason why cybersecurity profession is on, on the rise is AI poisoning. This type of cybersecurity crime is just beginning to appear, um, but there is no doubt that at some point in not so distant future, it will become a major type of cybersecurity crime, potentially dwarfing even AI phishing. And here's how it works. We will explain it on a very uh, simple, even primitive example. Um, so don't judge it too harsh. So imagine we have a payment terminal system and that system checks a photo of the payer before actually executing the transaction. Well, some payment systems, they already do that. And now imagine that uh, when that image recognition model of that payment system was being trained, a criminal has added a tiny image into the training data set, something barely noticeable uh, for a human eye, but very noticeable for the model. And as a result, Whenever the system sees that secret image hidden anywhere in the picture, it triggers a false positive reaction and the payment goes through, regardless who is actually standing in front of the camera. And that's what AI poisoning is. And that image is poison. The damage from this type of cyber crimes will soon make phishing look like a pocket money. The worst part is that once AI poisoning, uh, once it has penetrated the defense system and entered the AI model, it is nearly impossible to detect because AI model is effectively a black box for us. And even if it is somehow detected, Antidot can be prohibitively expensive because it will require retraining of the whole model and retraining or training the frontier model already costs hundreds of millions of dollars. Sam Altman, for example, from OpenAI, he believes that in just a few years, the cost of training a frontier model will be about $5 billion. So AI poisoning prevention, uh, detection and anti-doting is, um, is about to become a very active area in AI cybersecurity. And it's gonna keep gainfully busy many thousands of professionals. And these two areas, um, AI phishing and AI poisoning, these are just two cybersecurity sub-professions created by AI. There will be more, many more. In other words, AI cybersecurity is a path to survival. So we put it on our survival list. Leave a comment if you want a separate video just about AI cybersecurity. And now, profession number three, AI testing. I can see how many of you have just frowned. Because for decades, testing was considered as a second-class occupation. Most developers and engineers, we look down at testers. Well, let's be honest, um, well, we still look down at them. We consider them, consider testing as uh, some, how do we put it mildly? Well, something that is not super important. Do you remember that phrase? Like, we will test it if we have time. Right? So that was a common attitude towards testing. And what did the testers do? Um, well, they were building a few test cases and then a few uh, edge test cases and well, that's pretty much it. Few people cared about testing. Not anymore. AI is changing this. How exactly you test the AI model? Well, this is not a rhetorical question because AI model is a black box. We have seen it in this video. So what is basically happening inside of the neural network of an AI model is, a, is hidden from us. We do not see it. It is a black box. And imagine a situation where you have, let's say, you have just uh, spent $10 million fine-tuning the model. And now you need to know if that fine-tuning, if it made the model better or maybe worse. So is it okay to use a new model or you need to actually roll back? 
And uh, what if instead of just one AI model, you actually have a complex AI multi-agent system with 10 agents um, interacting with each other. So how do you actually test that? Testing is no longer backward of software development. AI testing has quietly become one of the most in-demand areas. And for us, it has become a path to survival. To sum it up, AI is quickly destroying knowledge-based economy and the professions. But in return, it creates new professions. AI parallel programming, AI cybersecurity, AI testing. Will these new professions be big enough to shelter, to absorb all those who are about to be replaced? Well, definitely not. Because we are probably talking about maybe tens of, or hundreds of thousands of jobs uh, within these new professions. And we're talking globally. So definitely not enough to absorb tens, maybe hundreds of millions replaced jobs. But those few of us who manage to get into these professions, they will be immune to the AI wave. They will find a path to survival. Well, at least for some time. Each of these professions deserve a separate video. And to get that video sooner, go to the comments and leave a comment. I need this profession. All right, it was great. See you on the other side.